right, everybody. So we had some fun with this one uh, last class on the warm up. And, and I'll admit, when I first looked at it, I, I just naively thought you could kind of alternate and it would always work out that, you know, if you're just adding and subtracting, that things are going to always make zero. Um, and didn't really realize that there was a little bit more to it than that. Um, the first thing that we noticed, uh, uh, one of our students, Josh, noticed that if you kind of match up these pairs here, that you're always going to have pairs that match up. So one and four make five, two and three make five. So if you put negatives here and positives there, you're going to make it equal zero. Okay. Then the uh, thing that we noticed uh, was that you couldn't really do that with this next one, because if you tried doing this and getting six here and six here, you can zero those out, but you don't know what to do with the three. So that didn't really seem to work. Uh, you could do here a five and a five, but then you have an extra five. So that didn't seem to work. Um, there was a couple other ideas, but it didn't seem to work at all when there were five numbers right there. Um, 50 numbers uh, also kind of was a tricky one because we could link up 1 and 50, 2 and 49, 3 and 48. You get down to the middle and there's again a leftover bit there. Um, and one of our students, Josh, suggested that anytime there are groups of four, then you are able to match them up like that because then you have the first and last and the second and the second. So anytime you have groups of four, you're able to do it. So the first conjecture we looked at is that if, let's get rid of that, if n is equal to 4k, for a k in z plus, then, then uh, I'll just write, you can make zero. And then for a second, we kind of thought maybe that was the only time that you could do it. But somebody brought up the number of um, seven. And so let's write out seven and see if we can make it happen. So here's six and there's seven. And the idea with this one was that um, you could link up the one and the six, uh, the two and the five, the three and the four, and those all actually add up to make sevens. And so you have three copies of seven over here with the pairs and then a fourth copy of seven. So you can make that into equaling zero. So for example, I could go um, make the one and the six both positive, uh, make the seven also a positive, and then subtract all the other ones because that's two more sevens. So that was zero out. So then we had another conjecture that if n equals 4k minus 1 can make 0. And the idea there is that the previous ones are all pairs that match up with the last term right there. And then we suggested that there was no other way to make 0 after that. Um, then Erskine was talking about how he agreed with that statement because every time you would take a number and shift it from a positive to a negative, the value of the sum would change by an even number. And so I'll try to give you a little bit of an example of what he was talking about. So for example, if we added up all of these original numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, we would get 10. If I changed one of those, let's do cross off the plus, make it into a minus. Now I just changed the sum down to 2. I changed it by double of the number that I changed because it was a plus 4 and switched to being a minus 4. So that takes away the plus 4 and takes away 4 more. Same idea. If I change this 3, it would be going down by 2 times 3. If I change this 2, it's going down by 2 times 2. And so every time that you switch one number from a plus to a minus, you are keeping the sum even or odd. Even or odd. And so um, if you look at some of the, 
values there, like, um, let's clear the screen here. If you look at the sum of this right here, this sums up to make 15. And so no matter what I change, if I change the 5 to a negative, I'm still an odd number. If I change the 4 to a negative, I'm still an odd number. Still an odd number. Still an odd number. I'm never going to reach 0 right there. And then, in fact, if I add on a 6 to it, now I'm going to go up to 21, and I'm still going to be an odd number, no matter what pluses I flip to minuses. And so the only ones that work are the ones whose sums of all of the original number are even. Okay, so that's kind of a cool idea. And so um, that is pretty dang close to a proof that the only ones that would work are the, are the ones that are evens. What we've really done is we've proved that um, both of the sums that are odd don't work. So uh, when we have a, the sum of the numbers is odd, we know we can't make zero. And we also showed two different strategies. We showed one strategy that works when it's a multiple of four and a different strategy that works when it's a multiple of four minus one. So we've really completed all four of the possible cases and have proved what types of number, uh, what types of sums of natural numbers are possible to make zero. Um, one last thing I just wanted to show you is that when you're adding up all of these numbers, you can write it in terms of our sigma notation from i equals one to n of our um, I values, and what we know is that this ends up equaling, uh, it's just an arithmetic sequence with a difference of one. And so we can say it is n terms times one plus n over two. And so we're able to determine if this is even or odd, and then from there determine if we're able to make the sequence equal zero and if we're going to use the 4K strategy or the 4K minus 1 strategy. So uh, I really enjoyed the conversation, and I just wanted to summarize a few things. I know it's going kind of fast, and there were a lot of different people talking, so I hope this clarified. Please ask questions or comment if there's anything else I can do to help. Thanks.